Zephaniah chapter 3. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. So directed to a city. And this is not pollution as in air pollution, water pollution, uh, any other kind of pollution. This is filthy and polluted with sin. She obeyed not the voice. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She did not listen to the Lord, the prophets that God sent. God tried to correct her. She didn't adhere to it. She drew not near to her God. This is the state of Jerusalem. God tried to warn her. God tried to send people to her. God tried to beat her. It only drove her away. Notice God does not change. He doesn't give in to the child. He doesn't pamper the child. And he doesn't go after the child. When the prodigal son said, hey, give me all my money, I'm going. Father said, go, here it is. Her princes within her are roaring lions. They devour people. If you are in the path of a hungry lion and you're a human, they're also likened to Satan. Satan is a lion, our adversary, seeking who he may devour. Her judges are evening wolves. Evening wolves. They rely on meat, prey, including humans if they had to be. They gnaw not the bones till tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. You want to say tomorrow when you read that. Your brain just gets used to it. They get so full on the meat, the fat, the guts, the gooey stuff. The bones are saved for the next day. A complete, utter destruction of the people. Nothing left but lion and wolf poop. So only things left. Her prophets are light and treacherous person. Light. They're just, they're fluffy toed. They're, they're, they got no backbone. They're jellyfish. They're women. I mean women. That they're males, but they act like women. There's no sound doctrine in them. Panty waves. Can I keep going? And treacherous person. Those prophets that dealt against Jeremiah oh we're gonna we're going to win we're go, here's the here's the yoke and all that and we're going to beat the king of Babylon there's no fear they deceived all the people had the nation listened to Jeremiah things would have been a lot different but they listened to those prophets her priests have polluted the sanctuary Brought in blood, brought in gods. We read about one king that had a priest make a make a an altar that he saw in Damascus. We seen him come in and uh, even maybe pork. There's all kinds of worship going on in the temple. It's not to God. The priests were having sex with the women. Eli's sons were doing that. Eli's sons were taking the offering before it was even burnt. They couldn't wait. They have done, there's that word again, violence to the law. They've not only obeyed, not obeyed the law, they've done violence to the law. The priest's duty was to obey that law. 
It looks like whatever the law told them to do, Leviticus, they were doing quite opposite. Violence to the law is not adhering to what God said, causing trouble and destruction to the people. What violence could you do today as Christians? Walk up to somebody and say, I'll just say this prayer and you're saved. And don't forget, the Bible says, once saved, always saved. Doesn't say that, but that's what you tell him. Violence to the gospel would be, give me $10 and God will give you $10,000. Complete, utter rejection of what God said. That's what it comes down to. And people's lives are destroyed and people end up in hell. The just Lord, I like that, is in the midst thereof. God don't see us. We got the lights turned down. We got very limited lighting. No one sees us. Yes, God does. God has been big brother before electronics were made. You think you got to worry about these drones? You behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Beholding the good, I mean, behold the evil and the good. There's even a place that says that the Spirit of God says, if you run to hell, there I am with you. Better realize and know. The one that's checking to see if you've been naughty or nice is not Santa Claus. Santa Claus can't be in every house at the same time. But God can. That's where Santa parts from God. He's got to climb down each and every chimney. God's already in the house. He will, do, he will not do iniquity. God. You heard about these other gods? You ever study Roman gods and the and the Greek gods have uh, immorality with with male flesh and female flesh and the human race? How they got all these wars going on? Drinking, eating. That one Christmas spirit, Christmas present is it? And he comes in with loads of food, filling his belly with wine. And he's fat as anything in all the movies. That's gluttony. That's a sin. Yeah, he's worship. Don't ever worship a fat God because that's gluttony. That's a God who can't control his weight. That's a God who can't control his diet. Every morning does he bring his judgment to light. How's that? The sun coming up. What is that sun that God just said? That's light. John chapter 3. And there was a great time in America when that sun came up, all the criminals went home. There was no robbery. There was none of those things going on during the day. Unless you were a very stupid or just thought pride of yourself as a criminal. But it was all done at night. There will be a time that old people would be afraid to go out at night, not during the day. A sun would come up and show there is light, there is God, there is Jesus Christ. He faileth not. When did the sun ever fail? We read in Joshua's time, there's probably a group of people saying, Where's the sun? I'll be darned, that sun should have been up by now. It had a little delay, but it did come up a little later. The sun will fail, the moon will fail one day, but God will not. When that sun and moon fail, then comes the righteous sun, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. The rain, everlasting righteousness. And you'll never need the sun and moon again after that. you got the light, the pure light, the capital L. But the unjust knoweth no shame. I've been in the prison ministry, man, I don't know how many years. 
And there are people who sit under a Bible teaching and the sins or the crimes that they've done, the sins, you let them lose, they're going to go do it again. Let me tell you, the biggest lie that this government will give you, I don't know about other countries, I know this is America, the biggest lie that they'll tell you is that place is called a correctional. And I can give you tons of uh, prison ministers, people active in the Bible and in the prison ministry, and they'll tell you the truth too. There is no correction. Unless one truly comes to God. I have cut off the nations. That was last night's topic. Wait a minute. I have cut off the nations, i.e., except for America. Let's don't say that. Their towers are desolate. That's strongholds. You know, the Tower of London will fall down. The tower in uh, London, the, the Eiffel Tower, will come down. All those towers in on the Great Wall of China will come down. I made their streets waste. So the streets are going to be no good. There that none passeth by. So in the tribulation period, you're not going to get around on a, on a transportation. You're not going to take the bus. You're not going to take a car. You're not going to take a truck. You're not going to take a van. You can't get by on the roads. So that there is no man. Desolation, isolation. Men can't get to the grocery store, they die. Men can't get to the water, they die. They're so fat and never walked a day in their life, they die trying to get to the grocery store. I gotta say the truth. There are people right now, if, if there was a nuclear bomb or UFO that shut all power down and everything that had electricity cannot work. There are some people right there who wouldn't even know what to do with a bicycle. And couldn't walk as far as the nearest 7-Eleven or other convenience store. I said, God, surely thou will fear me. Everything I've done for you, you will fear me. That will receive instruction. Listen to what I'm telling you. So their dwelling should not be cut off. I don't want to put you in hell. I'm long-suffering. Howsoever. That's a sorry word. Howsoever. I will punish them. But they rose early. And corrupted all their doings. In the tribulation period, you know the most saddening words are. Of all the saddening words in the book of Revelation. What God does to all those people. They seek death. They can't find it. Those scorpion tails. And they curse the God. Satan is loose after a thousand years. And he still finds an army to try to defeat Jesus Christ. That tribulation period is also, you know what? You can see the power of God. You can see how terrible God is, and no one gets right. You think America's bad now? You think America's at her wickedness now? There are people who are still believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior today. Salvation is still being wrought in. Uh, missionary places all over the world. There's coming a time when no one will get saved. Therefore will ye wait ye upon me, patience, save the Lord. Unto the day that I rise up to the pray, second advent. That hungry lion of, of the tribe of Judah, 
is coming to devour What about all those people that proclaim to say, oh, I eat Jesus' body and blood. You wait till that lion, Jesus comes and he eats your body. You've sinned. You read. Now, so, for my determination, this is what God determines. You ready? Is to gather the nation. You thought you thought all the countries in the world after World War One and after World War Two wanted to get together for the sake of peace. BC 630, God said, even before any war of all the nations, I'm going to gather them all together. The United Nations Assembly in New York City was prophesied by Zephaniah, and it's come to pass. We are outside the realm of the 48 prophecies of Jesus Christ. We are in the realm of prophecy in the church age, and yet prophecy that happened in tribulation, prophecy that happened at the second advent of Jesus Christ, prophecy that happened at the millennium, prophecy that happened at the end of the millennium, prophecy that happened at the great white throne judgment, prophecy that happened in the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem. Check that one off, however you mark your Bible. That has happened. You've seen it. You can go over there and take pictures of all the flags waving. That I may, what's that place called? Assemble. The Assembly of the United Nations. Where did they get that name from? Do you think somebody sat there, okay, hold on people, wait a minute, we need a name. Let's search through the Bible. Oh, man, 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 man. Find a name. They didn't use no Bible. They found one verse in the Bible about peace and stuck it on the wall. That's their peace, they think. That's that's the peace of Jesus Christ stuck on the wall. Not them. You know how many wars they started? You know how many wars they're involved in right now where you see UN troops? They're in peace and they got tanks white with UN painted on the side. That's peace. I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. This is how I want the love of God upon sinners. For all the earth. Is there any place on the earth that is not represented by that assembly? You say a few countries. Yeah, a few countries. But is it really in all reality all over the earth? All the earth shall be devoured with the nuclear bomb of my jealousy. No. The polar ice caps melting. No. What does Revelation say about Jesus coming on that horseback? With fire. Out of his mouth, the word, the sword. So you read, this is verse 8, right? Am I correct? This is a very big sentence, isn't it? Do you believe that there's an assembly called the United Nations as prescribed in verse 8? You believe that, right? You see it, right? In the same verse that's happened in our time, God says Jesus Christ is coming back on the horse, angry, as a lion, and out of his mouth is going to be fire, and he's going to devour the nation. Look at all the prophecies yet to be fulfilled in that verse. You know how much that verse has got to come true to God for God to be God? All of it. There's no God. Then verse 8 is a lie. According to, to Acts 20, 28, God shed his blood. God paid for us with his blood. That's Jesus Christ. So there's no God, there's no Jesus Christ. And there's no Jesus Christ, he ain't coming. So verse 8 is a, is a fail. I refuse to believe that. So you got unfulfilled prophecy even amongst fulfilled prophecy. 
for then when he gets angry return then will I God turn to the people of pure language after he torches the nations with his breath with his word with his mouth what happens next now this is the the judgment of the nations Matthew 25 what's he do next what's he do in the millennium I'm gonna take a little stretch out here I could be wrong you can throw in the garbage but Paul says the language in heaven is Hebrew everybody on planet earth in the millennium won't have to press one for English they're going to be speaking Hebrew you are going back in time in the millennium you're going back into a time machine before the Tower of Babel remember when God came down he confronted all their language and, and, and change their things and now you got to press one for English and now you can't understand the guy on the other side of the phone because he's speaking another dialect than what you know and all that. that's going to be bye-bye in a millennium if it's not Hebrew we're going to have one pure language in the millennium at least for that I believe it's Hebrew how's that I don't believe it will be English English is too messed up English doesn't even make sense. I before E suffer in your neighbor. And don't forget the sleigh ride. Don't forget to weigh it. A pure language. English is not pure. English is so spotty with different religions and different countries and different dialects of Latin, of German. English is not a pure language. I can say that much that they may call upon the name of the Lord why will God bring one language to glorify God so what is the imitation God does today you see it in the prisons Yahshua Jehoshua they're talking Hebrew that's not our language today you see how the devil is counterfeit that's true that's right but it's not now what words God wants you to know in Hebrew, he's put in here in Hebrew for you to know. Eli, Eli, lama sovektinai. That's Hebrew. God wants me to know that. Tabitha something. That's Hebrew. He wants me to know that. How's that? To serve him with one consent imagine a unity of all the people with Jesus Christ one language one motive one way wait a minute hold on I got something here hold on I am the way the truth and the life one exact way We're going as far as back as Adam and Eve before Genesis 3. That's how far we're going back. We're going back before the curse. The only thing that is remained to be cursed in the millennium is the snake. He still eats dust and has no legs. Everything else, the curse is removed. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplements. Even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring my offering. People from Africa are going to come and bring something, not to Pharaoh, but to Jesus Christ. How's that? Didn't we read about Ethiopia? It says, verse 12, ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring my offering. What's the offering? Go back and read Leviticus. Oh, Leviticus is such a boring book, isn't it? It is so boring. Yeah, but you're going to see it come alive in a millennium as a born-again Bible-believing bride of Jesus Christ. You're going to see all that in action. 
in that day thou shalt not be ashamed for all my doing no shame then there were people we, we just mentioned there were no shame of their sin where in doubt wait a minute paul says romans 10 uh whosoever believes on the, on the lord shall not be ashamed wherein thou hast transgressed against me for then will i take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride no pride in the millennium no proud that's another one you ever hear out of the pulpit proud pride i'm so proud that's satan speaking And thou shalt no more be haunted because of my holy mountain. No more sin. No more shame of sin, but no more shame of Jesus Christ. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and, oh my, get the Democrats and the, and the liberals off that. There's going to be poor people in the, in the millennium. <gasps> Shimmer my timbers, they're not going to tax anybody to give them money. Oh man, I can't even think that guy's name is running for the office. I don't even want to think about it. John 12 8, Matthew 26 11, and Mark 14 verse 7. You are not going to end poverty on this earth. And they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Why are some people poor and afflicted in the millennium? So they'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For some people, it takes affliction and it takes no money for them to do it. You know the worst thing you may be praying for somebody? It's going to sound harsh. Lord, heal them. Lord, give them some money. Those prayers may make them turn away from God. I'm not saying all. I'm just saying some cases. The best prayer, if you're talking about someone's soul that's lost, Lord, do whatever it takes. And then trust in God. And I practice that personally. You can't say I'm off the wall. And I can still say, no matter what had happened, God is too true. And that person is a fool. The raiment of Israel shall not do iniquity. Look at that. Nor speak lies. Look at that. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Look at that. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. There, that's not today that is not today that's the new heart and the tables written upon the heart that God will give them after that sing O daughter Zion shout O Israel be glad rejoice with all thy heart O daughter of Jerusalem you think they were doing that in Jeremiah's time you think they were doing that in the time of lamentation I don't think so. The Lord has taken away thy judgments. Tribulation. The Babylonians. The Ninevites. The Philistines. I just keep going on and on. He has cast out thy enemy. Matthew 25. Ishmael. Damascus. The Babylonians. The Moabites. The King of Israel, even the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Uh, let me get this correct. Hold on. King of Kings is the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jesus Christ. That capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is Jehovah. Jesus is Jehovah. is in the midst of thee the lord jesus christ in the millennium is going to sit right in jerusalem 
right where the temple is, in front of the temple on David's throne, watching all the priests and all the people do the work, like David did. Remember David looked out his window and saw the tabernacle and curtains? Well, G Jesus is going to look out the window. It's not going to be curtains. It's going to be glory. And when he sits out on that throne, all the earth is going to turn towards him and praise his holy name. Amen. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. Remember, evil is the result from sin. So if there's no evil, there's no sin. No earthquakes. No whirlwinds. No tornadoes. No tsunamis. No war. In that day, again, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. Oh, there's a lot of fear there today. You know, you can go sit down in a cafe, whatever, whatever. And sit down and have a hot cup of coffee and a hot chocolate with your spouse and your child and sit there and talk and have a guy come in and go kaboom and you wake up in eternity with your blood and his blood splattered all over the place there are teenagers that walk in israel right now with ak-7 strapped to their backs and it's not for hunting deers there are missiles that fly over into jerusalem into Israel. Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. Bring to the Lord, do all your hands. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. What's his name mean? Jehovah saves. Jesus. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, big G, O, D, will save. That is the name of Jesus Christ before he is born, before he is named. Check that one out. He will rejoice over thee. He didn't rejoice over them in the first coming. Man, he suffered pain and sorrow and, and nails. He will rest in his love. John 14 says, I will show you my love if you do my commandments. They're going to do his commandments and he's going to give them love. He will joy, oh, wait, love, joy, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Along with seven others. So there's the Holy Spirit, there is God, there is Jesus Christ, there is the Trinity in chapter 3, verse 17. I will gather them, and he will joy over thee with singing. Jesus is going to sing. Last time Jesus sung, he sang a hymn on his way to the garden says he sang a hymn with his disciples I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of these to whom the reproach of it was a burden behold at that time I will undo all the afflicted thee in the tribulation period we're back in I will save her that halteth. That's limp. You gotta use a cane. And gather her that was driven out, cast out. Get out of here. I will get them a praise and fame. Oh, God will give you fame. In every land where they have been put to shame. Germany is going to rejoice over the Jews. Russia is going to rejoice over the Jews. But the Russians and the Germans won't be there. At that time, will I bring you again. Even in the time that I gather you, I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity 
before your eyes. Save the Lord. And what a way to end the book. It ends, excuse me, people. It ends with Israel on top. So don't tell me God's all finished with the Jews. That's an outright lie. 